Hey traders, what's up? Jamie Setley here. It is a few seconds before the start of the webinar. Uh, so starting 15 seconds early here. But how is everybody? And uh, let me know that you can hear and see. Okay, good. Pooja says everything's good. All right, great. Okay, so we will run through the first thing I want to go through is actually the uh, the FXCM Dow Jones the dot that dollar index. Um, so this is I have us at a pretty big spot here as far as the um, you know the test for support. You could actually go I guess a sl a, a wee bit lower, right? Um, if this this line folks you just all you do is cross from the highs back and starting in 2005 okay and you can see that it went through the high last year or I guess it was actually that was actually in 2015 uh, no, it was January 2016 it was um, so it's actually a, it's a little bit lower than where we were yesterday uh, and if we were to get down below there I would consider this to be a massive failure. But until then, it's really, 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 really kind of really important to be super um, nimble, I think. And you always want to be nimble, but uh, you don't want to get caught, you know, putting on positions at bad prices and, and then let it run against you. Right. That's why I've been really, really quick to tighten stops on trades. Around these levels, um, I mean, look at Dollar Cat, great example, right? Uh, you know, there was no, there's no need to take a bigger loss than you need to, because if we went through that morning high at 31.20, that that was it. And we'll get to Dollar Cat in a little bit, but now it's 31, well, just about 31.80. And did we make a high volume level there? We did. Uh, we did. So. We'll get to dollar cad in a bit but first thing here let's focus on this dollar chart okay so this is the weekly US dollar chart uh, again if we were to get down below this level then it's really a break until then it's really difficult to get too bearish um, in my opinion so here's the four hour chart and this chart, let's see, you have it on. I get, well, it doesn't really matter because it's a four hour chart if it's on log or not. But this is the four hour chart. And what we've got here, so take a trend line from like the, the pre Brexit um, what just happened? What did I do? Oh, I moved it. Here we go. Take a, a, a pre-Brexit low and then the low on September 8th. Okay. And what that gets you is a nice slope where you can see the 75 line of that slope was really good resistance. And then it was support. Okay. And it was support. Uh, in December, December 8th, which was ECB actually. Uh, pretty close to the low here just last week, last Thursday. And then uh, we've broken down below it. So, you know, combine the long term chart, right, with that support level around. 12,350 or so. And the median line of this structure, which as you can see, some big levels, some big levels, right? Um, and you have a really big zone, really from about 12, I'd say 12,330, uh, 12,320 to 12,350. 
Okay. So, you know, with that, I'm kind of looking for one more, maybe one more drop in a dollar um, <clears throat> before we can maybe think about a bigger bounce. And you'll you'll see that with especially with some of the commodity currencies, I think. Um, but let's focus on resistance now. So again, the resistance line, the line that was resistance, you can see comes in up at about 12, 4, uh, 20 or so around there. So we're kind of in the middle of nowhere at this point. Yes, Theo, absolutely. I'll get to that. Let me make a note of that actually to write, look at that in the crosses. Okay. Um, so you have right now kind of in the middle of nowhere. I don't, you know, really know if we're going to try to go to resistance first and then turn down, or if we're going to go try to support first and then get a bounce. Either way, these are the levels that I am focusing on. Uh, I would, I guess, hope. Uh, that it would be a dip before you went higher just because, you know, you want to see that uh, pound dollar, you know, fourth wave that we've got uh, or that I think has happened. You want to see the, the market turn up in the fourth, in the, you know, in the fourth uh, or complete five waves up. Either way, these are the big levels that I think it's important to watch on the um, this U.S. dollar index, and to be quite honest, this index I find clear or better to look at for general dollar um, action, if you will, moves, whatever, than say the um, you know the DXY, because that's just so heavily skewed to Europe. Okay. All right. Also, to draw the draw on the bearish one, I know it's tempting to draw something like this, right? Which looks really nice, and that could work out. I'm looking more, actually, though, at this. Let me show you. Go to 60 minutes. Nope, sorry. 240. I'm looking more at that. And the reason I have it drawn off here is if you remember this little spike here was around when Trump started speaking last Wednesday. And then we got that whole crazy move uh, in the dollar. This also gives you obviously more room to work with um, as far as resistance and all that's concerned. It lines up much better as well with some of the, um, you know, the, the, the levels. So you've got, Two, you've got intersections here on both the support and resistance levels, right? So if we're going to go to resistance first, it might be like that, and then down into support here or up or over here, okay? Um, and that would put us on Friday. That would put us right down at the bottom on a Friday low. And it, maybe if you're going to go to Friday low, and then get a bounce somewhere up here. You see that was resistance there. So, look, I don't obviously know, uh, or I don't really have a, a, an opinion on which on which one's going to go first or which side's going to go first. But these really are the levels that I want to uh, trade, pay attention to, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. I still think it's really nimble time to be trading, uh, really kind of want to be on both sides of the dollar, not be totally outright bullish, totally outright bearish at this point, right? And these levels really bring that bring that home. Uh, I will say that if you did, if we just went through this and got back above here, then you kind of have to look at this line of support again, all right? Uh, really, you know, and I've talked about this before. I have, I'm having a hard time with the, with, I guess, a wave count on this, right? Because you can go one, two, 
you know, but what, what's this, right? One, this is probably, this would be a flat here. Okay, so if we go, you know, one, two, I want to just count not in really wave terms, like one, two, three, four, five, you know, and, and, and impulse within an impulse. I just want to count the numbers. So if we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve means that we could actually get one more rally to make 13, okay? So being very open to this, um, very, very open to interpretation, but over the next several days, maybe a week, maybe even longer than that, this is what I want to look at, okay? So I hope that's clear. Sound like Ter Teresa May yesterday when she said, uh, didn't she say that like a million times? She's like, I hope I hope I'm clear, right? I want to be clear. So yeah. All right. So now that that's out of the way, and that that that's really the uh, the major um, you know thing that I think you'd want to keep on your screen uh, along with whatever. It is that you're putting through in trading. And uh, I want to say hello to some peeps. So, Conwell, how you doing, my friend? Um, I will definitely go through, you know, the silver, copper, nat gas and everything for you and, and everyone else. Uh, but let me go through some of the FX stuff before that. All right. So there we have our U.S. dollar long term, short term. Big considerations, right? All right. Um, dollar again. Let's 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 move on to dollar again because if there's anything that's been, I guess you could say, somewhat clear. We just got a here's a signal. I'll, I'll talk about this at the end of the webinar. I'm working on a. I've been well. I've been working on for years and years and years and years um, a system. It's specific actually to uh, to euro. And I'll go through that towards the end, and you guys can tell me if it's something that you think you'd be interested in. But first, let's look at, at dollar yen. So dollar yen, um, we had the drop. Remember RSI being above, you know, the the 80 figure, right? And then once you turn down and drop below the 20-day average. You go to the 55-day average and our side bottoms under 40 or very close to it, right? So 80, you know, plus 80 plus, right? 80 plus, 80 plus. I mean, it's pretty, uh, pretty cut and dry there. So. Here we are, uh, and we have bottomed um, with the seven days down as well. Let me get rid of some of this other stuff on here. So this is just the highlighted thing just to show you that you have an 80, a reading of 80 plus. All right, let's get rid of that. So we have the knowledge that we could be at some sort of a big uh, low of, you know, or a bigger low than maybe people realize at the moment in dollar yen and we're turning up here um, after the seven day move. Okay. Uh, it's a good sign that you're close to a square root level 1290. Um, when it comes to the, you know, the chart, right? We have the, this is the chart I showed last night and remember It's very much like the dollar, actually, in uh, the, the index we just looked at, actually, right? The big support is maybe after one more low, just one more low. And just the tendency for dollar yen to, you know, to make those, those, those kind of final stabs at a level, 
I'm wondering if we get this tomorrow during Asia um, because that's when it lines up. So, you know, when I'm with with me right now, dollar yen, I'm kind of willing to trade into 1390, 14, 114 as a short with a very tight stop, right? Probably just above uh, the high at 1428, uh, which is essentially the weekly opening price. And then maybe try to take that down into 1230. Uh, for the buy, right? And then that buy, you'd be looking for uh, probably at least a move up into the upper upper parallel slash resistance line here. So that is dollar yen, uh, lines up very well with the dollar analysis that we just went through, okay? Uh, now, what about a wave count here, right? This is a one or an A, okay? So at this point, we got to go A, B, C. And we do have a measurement to consider. So the 618 measurement or 1618 of this actually puts you at 1179, which is smack dab on the square root level at 1184, okay? And that's the fifth square root down. Um, so that's something to consider, at least, you know, if you get like a bigger spike, right? We know how dollar yen, dollar yen usually doesn't, doesn't usually bottom quietly, let's put it that way, right? It, it, a lot of times it just goes right through a level, you know, you think that it's gonna go fall off the face of the earth and then it does a V bottom. So you got a couple levels to think about, 1230 and 1180, okay, call 1180. So I would think about those two levels, I would mark those down. Um, that's dollar yen, okay, right now. Let's move on to dollar cad, it's probably one of the more interest or the next, Maybe the next interesting one. So I'm actually kind of happy that it didn't break down because I had a crappy small position anyway. Um, and I do feel like that it's gonna that this is gonna be pretty messy. Uh, you have come in right back at the at essentially the breakdown level. All right now. <clears throat> 130, I guess, would have been nice to flip for a long position, but we do have, there is a short-term structure to look at uh, for dollar cad at this point for a potential, um, you know, for a buy, basically going into, well, from here, from, from this point forward. And you've got one, the 131 level, okay, which is big as far as, you know, was support and resistance this level 131.08, 131.10, call it. Um, but you see how the 25 line was, remember the 25 line was, was support, okay? Essentially, we'll be looking probably at the, um, or sorry, this is 75 line, be looking at the 25 line as resistance, all right? And given my thoughts on crude oil, which are bearish at this point, uh, you could get up into this, you know, level over the next couple of days. So that puts you up near, you know, one, really about 133. All right, now let's look at the short-term picture. Uh, as far as entry would be concerned, I'd be looking at it like this. Weekly open 31.34. You might be able to get an entry into that level at 31, you know, call it 31.40 or so. 
okay? Uh, your next resistance is about 32.10 to 32.35. And judging by this thing getting really jumpy right here, maybe it tries to do that in the next uh, couple of minutes while I'm on this, while I'm on this webinar. Um, but that's, you know, it, this is the structure to look at as far as dollar CAD on the upside in the near term. And then you can see where we intersect at 133 up here. Okay. So 133, uh, great intersection again, 75 or 25 line, right? With the bottom down here on the 75 line. So, uh, do pay attention to, uh, dollar CAD, uh, heading into uh, 133 over the next day or two, probably the next day. All right. And I'll look at the crosses at the end, but that brings me, I guess, to um, to EuroCAD, right? We, which is one we talked about recently. All right, what about some of these commodity currencies uh, seem to be, or the other commodity currencies we just looked at CAD? What about Kiwi and what about Aussie? I think these are setting up for sales. Um, Kiwi more so than Aussie. And again, that's also obviously an expression on just general bearishness on uh, Kiwi over, you know, over Aussie, right? The long Aussie Kiwi, which was just asked about actually um, by Theo. So <clears throat> look, if we turn right here, kind of a shame because I actually have resistance better up around 72.60. That's remember the trend line? from January last year and um, in May last year, right? So that level intersects up here just above the high from December, all right? Uh, you might be able to get up into there. It would be a little above 72.60 at this point over the next couple of days. Now, if I go to a four hour chart, because as we're coming off here, you know, where might you get support? Well, this is last week's high right here at 132. <clears throat> Pay attention to that, uh, by the way, that 32.10.30 area in, um, in dollar CAD, okay? <clears throat> Getting really close. Could get something of a pullback from on this move. A little higher though. So with Kiwi, you know, 30, what well, I say, 7144 is the high from last week. It's last Thursday's high, yeah. Um, and, you know, I'd be looking at essentially, you know, for some sort of support there, right? You've got a pretty good structure on the short term, you know, the short term fork. Um, you can see that it's very it's bullish the way it's acting. We get the higher the higher ceiling, right? Typically, a higher ceiling, you get a higher floor. And you know the last floor is down here, right? That's where the lows came from. So you essentially be looking for a um, here. I'll even go to 60 minute chart. Let's go to 60 minute. Try to clean it up. So. The last floor, again, yeah, is down here, okay? So you'd be looking for something, you'd look, be looking for the market to find support really before these lows. Okay, so before this line is where you'd be looking for support to register. Um, you know, this seemed, might seem a little too high. 7144, 7150 is really the only good spot that I've got uh, because that's the, um, you know, former, just good former highs, basically. 
here we have 32.10 on dollar CAD. So between here and 32.30 is where I think you might actually get some sort of a pause in this move. <clears throat> All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I don't want to concern myself with counting this right now. Um, what I would do is simply wait for 7260, and if you get it up there, I'd be wanting to sell it, right? If you come in and put some good hourly bars maybe on uh, 714050, I think it's a buy into 7260. Until then... Just kind of sit tight. So two trading levels here. 714050, 7260. Okay. All right. Let's go to Aussie. Um, similar, obviously, um, but really not doing much in the way of a pullback here, is it? You know, Kiwi's coming off pretty nice. Aussie's um, not doing much of anything. It's just sitting there. Looks like it wants to pull back, but it's looked like that for a bit, hasn't it? So, just let me go back to the 240. <clears throat> so, here's the 240, okay? And again, the original slope on this, just the two lines off of the, you know, off of here. Um, you know, are suggesting, um, you know, that you're at resistance, okay? But let's go back to, let's go to the longer term stuff because that's really what ends up paying in the end, right? So I've been looking for what's our new bull slope on Aussie, and I did talk about this last week. I think it's this. Okay, I just think it's this line, and which means you're going to get parallels on it, which should come into play. Okay, so here, here, you can see it was kind of resistance for like two days, and then you went nuts. So the next buy point might actually be on this on this line right here. All right. But let's see where we would have um, if we were to put up a full on fork where it would come into play. All right. Well, if you had a regular fork, you should probably be getting some resistance first on the 25 line. Okay. So that gets us up to about 76.20 at some point. All right. But if we look at it from a trend line perspective, lo and behold, you would have the median line up there as well. Now, you can see that you'd cross through these. There's a bunch of good touches, right, kind of on these lines here too. So like Kiwi, uh, you know, and having resistance a, a tad bit higher, what would we say, 72.60, right? It does appear that Aussie's got maybe some resistance a little higher. Um, 76.20 is the specific level that I'm paying attention to. And it, you can see marked in red, that's the fifth square root progression from the yearly opening price. All right. Uh, fifth square root progressions have been pretty good in Aussie uh, lately. In fact, if we go back to 2016, the low for the year was right on August or January 15th at that square root 
progress the minus five. Okay, we ended up getting resistance at plus five, although the high was, the, you know, the next high. But plus five was really kind of resistance around that 77 figure uh, for really all year. And then you had the election. Okay, so you know, watch that 7620 spot. Watch it close. Um, you know, I'd really have that marked down. And you know, eventually the next big buy point, you know, probably between 74 and 74.50 or so would be my, um, you know, my uh, best estimate at this at this point. Okay. So there is the Aussie picture. Some good levels to work with, right? The next move, hopefully, uh, fading kind of exhaustion into the highs, right? And notice how these you know, I'm talking about these levels, like 76.20 and Aussie. And Aussie is one of the markets that's a part of the uh, the dollar index, right? The uh, the U.S. dollar, the the Dow Jones FXCM one. So notice how I'm talking about like a little higher and then fade it. Um, it's the same thing with the dollar, right? We're talking about just maybe a little lower and then, you know, maybe you get a bigger bounce in the dollar. Same thing with dollar yen. We just, you know, we just talked about that. Maybe that one more dip, right? One more low between 1180 and 1230. And then you get the, the, uh, the possible buy point. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So those I think are the majors. I want, oh, pound dollar, obviously. Okay, so here's the cable chart, just the daily. This is the one from last night. We did come off nicely. We came into uh, what I, you know, had as support. Basically, 22.78 was the, the the yearly opening price. Um, it's also the 20-day average. You can see in green, which again was actually resistance um, last week or two weeks ago. And so now it's providing support, and I am looking for a move up into 20, 125 or so, and that's just the trend line from the highs uh, in December, right? December 6, December 13, December 14, and it does intersect more or less with 125, 124.90. It de decreases obviously a little bit each day, uh, so hopefully, you know, the Titan stop is safe, but not really trying to take too much risk uh on uh you know on something like this right now with all the brexit stuff going on uh theo has a question so levels of 70 okay assume that you're asking about kiwi at this point levels of 70 probably won't be on the cards for long oh oh 70 and kiwi look i can't i don't really know i with kiwi i look i like the aussie um I haven't really made a secret about that, right? I like Aussie, I like copper. With with Kiwi in 70, I don't know. I need to do some some work on 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 Kiwi. Okay. All I know is that let's just concentrate on the next, you know, trade, if you will, or operation. And that really is the fact that I think that 7260 is a level that will be worth a fade. Okay. It'll be worth a you know a a level to, to trade. Let's here. Uh, let, let me bring up a we'll bring up a longer term. Uh, let me bring up something longer term for Kiwi for you. Okay, so there is a really good slope on Kiwi on the long term chart, and it's right here. This is. <clears throat> Yeah, linear chart. Okay, so you do have really good long-term stuff up here. Um, actually, even have longer-term resistance up at 73.40. Uh, but you know, this to me is the operable upslope. And again, just because you know, the market has broken it, it doesn't mean that this isn't or can't work again. All right. So what I mean is it could work as resistance. It could also work as support. 
Okay, so this might seem totally wacko, but it's not. Um, if this is really the angle to pay attention to, and you can see there was some struggle around here. So, you know, would maybe watch this level down here at 71.15. Uh, at some point, but you know, for me, I just know that I, I want to be a seller more than likely, or at least, you know, be of, an, of a bearish opinion. Probably, if we get up into, <clears throat> excuse me, up into 72.60, 72.70. You know, this is to me doesn't really have much. I don't know what this is, right? So I don't really have a pattern to say. For you to say this is you know some sort of a b c whatever probably this probably ends up being some massive consolidation um you know that turns into a triangle or something just because it's not totally clear it's kind of a mess all right so again there's hope that helps here for the short term uh or the short and long term for kiwi all right let's go to some crosses and then I'm gonna do I'll do some crosses. Then I'll do some of the commodity stuff that uh, you know Con Wall loves so much. And I'm sure other people do too. Um, all right, Con Wall. My man's asking about neck gas. So this is really what we had been looking at. Um, so a gap fill here, bounce. Um, I'd say that you probably have support a little lower than this. For net gas, just real quick, looks like 324 is a level. So that's where I would focus my short term trading attention on, it's 324. Okay. Um, bigger picture this looks like it could be pretty bearish though so you know if you get below that level then you're looking down towards the lower parallel 29 and energies in general folks i think are in trouble crude oil talked about that um But this is, you know, very weak looking head and shoulders top up here. So that's net gas. You know, the big level here is the trend line on log scale. Okay. So you got 324 low from 1220 possible for a bounce. But, you know, the failure at the median line right here suggests that we're headed back towards the lower parallel, which I'd put it. 2.9 or so, oh, just around 2.9, 2.92. All right. Now let me get into some currency crosses for you real quick. <clears throat> okay, so I want to look at some of the euro ones. Um, we'll start with euro yen. So euro yen... This is a daily, and always good to remember. Oh. I guess I can't find what I'm looking for. But always good to remember, um, you know, when you have a, a something that lines up with the horizontal levels as well and you have that here with the high from two days ago at 2166 I would be looking for 2166 resistance or so you can see it's pretty close to support as well on 1229 um, I'd be looking for resistance around 2166 and for a final drop down into 
1990 to 120 or so um, before you got a bigger, you know, bounce. Okay, so that's what I would look at. And we, if I go to the four hour chart, there is a short, there is a slope here, you know, that's okay. It's kind of worth, I guess, paying attention to. Um, you can see the median line that you've been riding on. Okay, so pay attention to this because if you end up kind of coming back down to this median line and, and launching off of it, uh, it gives you a little more, you know, a little more um, confidence, I guess you'd say, in looking at this as, as continued support. All right. But off here, yeah, I'd look at this level, 30, 2160s. Okay, is resistance essentially in 1990, 120, 10 or so as support over the next few days for a bigger, uh, a bigger low in Euro Yen. Euro CAD, this is one wrote about a while ago. We talked about the, it's finally coming to fruition, it looks like today. Um, talking about a possible flat we are getting close to resistance at 41, 70, 80 or so. And you've got, yeah, there it is, 41, 70, 41, 80. Um, oh, dollar cat. I'm getting close to 32.30. So, yeah, this is an area to pay attention to, okay? And 4180 was the April low from last year, right here. All right, what about Euro uh, Pound? This is one that obviously any pound cross is going to be pretty nuts at this point. So this was the chart we had. We were looking for a top around uh, 87.80, I think it was. And, what, you know, we all know what happened there. Um, you had the big gap and then the reversal. And then um, basically came back down into, into support. Okay, so from here, it's just like pound dollar. It's just you know the the inverse for the most part, right? I am looking for one more low, so one, two, three, four, one more drop into a five. Then you could get a recovery, and if you did, I think the sell opportunity is up at eighty-seven, sixty or so, because that would be Again, your resistance level um, along with a horizontal level here. Give it yourself a nice little head and shoulders would be real nice uh, to take Euro Pound, I think, back towards, you know, at minimum, I'd be looking for a low down below 83, okay? But, you know, we'd probably want to target some at 85 and change your opening price, stuff like that. And Aussie Kiwi. So still actually holding that resistance. If I go to the daily chart, you can see it. Um, putting a little bullish day here uh, would respect potential for one more dip, maybe. Okay. You get the 618 at 104.30. You got 104.56 is the 50%. Obviously, the low today is just above that level, um, but uh, would be looking for um, either support there or if we get back above resistance here, it's just go time, right? Breakout. It's kind of all there is to it. So, uh, you know, looking at, again, either a dip into this and then just 
you know, take it or, you know, better option probably would be a breakout and, you know, close back above this level, take the trade, stop below the low of whatever today is. Okay, assuming you break out. I'm not sure what I think. Actually, I think tonight you do have something on the calendar. I think there's a. Thursday, Wednesday, you do have tonight. You've got Aussie employment, so be wary of that. Obviously, um, you know, there could be something where you get a exhaustion move higher in the Australian dollar, right? It, you, you can kind of feel it too, right? The Aussie not doing a whole lot. It's just kind of sitting here sucking in all those poor shorts. And maybe, you know, Aussie employment comes out, it gives, you know, final rip higher and then into 76.20 and then it comes off after it stops everybody out. So that might be something to uh, to consider. OK, so what else we were going to look at? Copper and. Um, and silver, I think. Silver and copper. Okay. <clears throat> so with copper. Uh, I know, I think you probably talked to Mike. This was the chart. Look, Mike's going to be a shorter term than I am, right? As you know, this is the chart from earlier in the week. Okay. And so we had resistance and we did, we have come off that resistance pretty good. Um, you know, we've come, come off level nicely. Uh, I would be looking for support because I think we're actually, we could be in a kind of a broader consolidation to be honest with you here, right? So I think you could have something like, you know, this could be A, B, C, right? D, one more drop gives you an E. So there'll be two levels to look at. One is, well, actually they're pretty much the same level. So the daily reversal support, the low day close is the close from 1227 and that is 252.30. 618 of the alternating leg is 253.55. So all we need is a day or two of complete sharp dumpy weakness. And we're going to get into that region. Um, oh, dollar cad taking off on the upside. Let's see where we might be. All right, so 3230, this was kind of the area I was thinking about maybe. Uh, <clears throat> all right, you could maybe pause here for a little bit. We'll see. Probably want to be a buyer into 3180 though at this point. I mean, shit, this thing's almost already at the target. These markets are nuts right now, huh? Everything is just super fast. Not much, uh, not much room for for waiting. Anyway, so that is my idea on copper. Okay, I do think that you can get lower. Now, look, I mean, short term, intraday, hourly, can you bounce? Of course you can, right? I mean, this doesn't look like the most bullish short term chart to me. I'd be looking toward this level, to be honest with you. All right. All right. Let's take a look at. Um, excuse me. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Sneeze. All right. Um, silver. So silver this is the same silver chart we've been looking at for 
I mean, weeks and weeks, maybe months. I don't know. Uh, but silver is getting into its first resistance at this point as well. Okay. So 17, uh, 30, 1750. Okay. Uh, going to be an area that, um, I would expect to see some, some sort of resistance. I mean, if you don't get resistance here, then it's a pretty big breakout. Yeah. So Conwall, you've got resistance, you know, again, it's more or less, I mean, kind of here, it could be a little higher, 1750s, all right? But again, if you don't hold this, uh, it's really, you know, it's a pretty big, it's a pretty big deal, okay? You could end up, you know, really going a lot higher. Um, you know, my gut says that we try to hold this area, pull back, but find support at a higher level. That's how you make a bull, you know, move happen, right? You find support at a higher level, not just on the, um, on, on, you know, on a horizontal basis, but on a slope basis. So, so far you've channeled and you've made the low at the channel low, right? So what you would like to see really, uh, you know, textbook kind of thing would be to see support maybe at the median line, right? That area was more or less resistance before. So you get some resistance up here, then some support down here. Okay, dip, and then get a move higher. <clears throat> and that's what, you know, that's something I would be looking uh, looking for in silver. So I'd be looking for, because you have an uptrend, okay, here, a bigger uptrend underway. All right. So the level to watch for support, in my opinion, is going to be on a higher slope of this same plane, all right? You see this one? See this slope here? Crosses all these. It might be back on this. Maybe it's 16, uh, what's that, 1670 or so, 1668, 1670. It might, that might be where you want to look, all right? So, Essentially, resistance about 1750, support around uh, 1660 uh, is my humble opinion. All right. Okay, so just to recap on the um, the dollar, really the biggest thing to watch, you know, keep this chart front and center, okay? <clears throat> this four-hour chart for U.S. dollar, right? I mean, or you can make it hourly. At this point, I really don't have – we're really in the middle of nowhere, Right, really in the middle of nowhere at this point. Uh, this to me is the most important chart right now. Resistance there, support there, and then of course the weekly chart testing the massive support area. Um, what else was I going to look at? Oh yeah, so the system. So this is a 10 minute this is a 10 minute uh, chart and I've been working on this system for a very long time. Um, This is actually two years of data on this on this system. Okay, so it's a lot of trades. Uh, it's over a thousand trades actually, and 
we're thinking about trying to, we're trying to think about a way that we can get these sent out because it typically gives, it gives like two to four trades a day on Euro. Uh, and it's only between the times of, it takes out Asia. So it's between the time of uh, the European open and the US close. It takes out Asia because the performance in Asia is the worst of it. All right. Um, it's a very small edge. So, you know, it's not something where you think it's going to, you know, all of a sudden turn into a, you know, money making machine. It doesn't work like that. Um, but over long periods of time, it does do very well. It's got a pretty good, you know, drawdown to uh, ratio and it tests well over any time frame as far as look back periods. So, you know, in terms of, say, Looking back 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 120 days, 240 days, or 480 days, so like two years, two years, you know, down, right? Um, all the in and out of sample testing is very similar. It works very well. So what we're thinking about doing, um, and you can see some of the trades it's put on the last couple of days. So like yesterday, it had a buy here, uh, and that was a, a a buy there, sell out, you know, buy here, close out, buy here, close out. Took a short today and just closed for a loss of looks like six pips. And it actually just bought down here. So it could be something that you use as a some somewhat of a tool as well. Um, but, you know, perhaps this is something that would interest uh, some of you guys and maybe other people as well. I don't know. Um, so it's very early stages uh, as far as trying to get it out. But what we're trying to do is think of a, is basically have it so it sends an email alert. So would that be something that people would be interested in, you know, interested in and maybe at least helping us test it out? Uh, just trying to gauge interest basically, you know, because I don't, uh, obviously, some people aren't going to want to get emails, right, like that all the time. Um, but if it's, you know, limited to two to four trades a day, you're not going to be getting a ton of emails anyway. But obviously, before it's, um, you, Doug says text. Well, I'm not sure if we, if we, it depends on the software we can do. But yeah, I mean, eventually text would be great, you know, the SMS and stuff. So Leon says, what basis? It's a 10 minute, it's based on 10 minute data uh, obviously I'm not gonna I can't give you if I just gave out the code it would be kind of stupid um, but it is based on a momentum measure so there's three measures to it a momentum measure um, time obviously when to trade it's only as I mentioned it's only between Europe and US sessions and then it uses profit targets based on um, a score you know a, a percentage of square root of price OK, and then there's a stop loss. There's a maximum time time trade as well. Leon says, does it work on a higher time frame like 60? Uh, it 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 does, but not as well. Um, so, you know, it's it does, but it doesn't work nearly as nearly as well. So the maximum trade for this would be like it would be like a three hour thing. You can see that there there's the blue signals are buys. OK, and the reds are sells. Pretty simple. OK, but again, it only does it during certain periods of the day. So like this actually wouldn't have triggered because that was during Asia. Right here. Um, here's a, this is an, here's an equity curve. You can see it did really well in 2016. It did okay in 2015. So far this year, so far this month, it's done well. It's made 120 pips. You could look at monthly. So it has had one, three, you know, three move, losing months in a row. Uh, had a losing month in seven, minus 74 pips in November, but then it made 380 pips in uh, December. And before that, it had a nice streak going. So as you can see, it's usually around 45 to 60 trades. A month, so you know it's about three a day, three a trading day, for the most part, right? Assuming 20 trading days in the month. 
So uh, what I'm going to do, it sounds, so I've gotten a lot of people here that said yes, they'd be interested uh, in it. So that's good. So what it will do is we'll uh, try to get some stuff together on it so you have more information on it. And, you know, obviously the current members and everything, you guys will be, uh, you know, you can test it and stuff and um, get some kinks worked out in it. And then maybe we'll try to take it to a bigger a bigger level at some point. All right. But yeah, I just wanted to gauge some quick interest in it. All right. You know what? Before we go, it's been an hour, but before we go, what I want to do quickly is just take a quick peek at the S&P 500 chart because we've got this. Uh, looks like we got a little response up here in dollar CAD, did we? Got that 3230 area. So, man, I don't know if you get support down here. At this point, I'd watch for support around 3180. Okay. So I watch for support down here at this point, um, 3180, 13305 maybe. <clears throat> nice, Pete. Pete, making it work, man. Making it rain over there, buddy. That's sick. All right. Um, We are going to look at S&P 500. That's what I said I was going to do. So the S&P, um, it's been pretty dead, huh? But there's a big level to watch out for, folks. Um, if I go to the daily chart here, look, it's been dead since basically the 13th of December. Um, and this could be a continuation pattern, okay, to go higher. The big level is 2240.75. That is where you open the year, and it's also this slope line, which is based on the line that crosses through the uh, June and um, November lows, not including, of course, the overnight election limit down spike, okay? So, yeah, that's what I'm watching out for, all right, is basically 2240.75. You get below there, and then things start to get a little more interesting on the downside. But, look, I'd be looking for a drop into this and then for it to hold. That's what I'm looking for on the S&P 500. Again, if you get below there, things get interesting from a bearish perspective. Um Conwall asking about crude. Yeah, I think crude is screwed, basically. What's it doing right now? Oh, minus 2%. All right, so I think crude's going to 49. It's been hanging up and not doing much. Um, you've seen the chart, the price chart. You know what I think about the level uh, as far as going to 49. But what you also have right here is... COT, and this is, all right, so you see the net positioning in crude oil? Speculators, the red people up here, longest ever, well, very close to it. The last time they were this long was up here before crude basically fell off the face of the earth. All right, I'm not saying that crude's going to fall off the face of the earth like it did here, because if it did, it would be at like $10. While that might be good for us to drive around, it probably would not be a great thing for the world. Is If that were to happen, I can't imagine what, what, what else would be going on. Um, but yeah, I think you have to be pretty, you know, bearish on crude oil right here. Okay, when I look at the price chart, of crude oil. <clears throat> okay, here's the February August trend line. That's still the trend line. All right, despite all this jazz. Uh it's breaking below it right now. And 
you have a head and shoulders target right here or head and shoulders going on, really your first area of even possible support is just around 49 bucks, okay? If you get below there, if you get below there, If you get below there, you're probably talking more like down into 47 and change. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, you know, the COT tells me that crude, crude might be in, in some trouble, basically. All right. Um, it's just, it's so crowded. The, cr the trade is crowded beyond, beyond belief. It's the, it's as crowded as it was in the 2014 high, okay? And look, I can make all kinds of arguments from a an Elliott wave perspective. I could say this is A, you know, I could say that this is A, big A, okay, small A, small B, C, and that you're gonna go flat on this and you're going all the way back down to test basically the low from last August. Is that that crazy of a thought? Not with the position that COT's in right now, I don't think. All right. Um, so, yeah, I would just, uh, you know, I would, I would think about that. And if we have this, that brings up a whole. Now my mind's going crazy. If we have, if we, if we have this whole idea of potentially crude with how crowded it is, look at, look, what's the Aussie CAD chart look like? Well, it's already turned up like crazy. But yeah, you know, look at look at Aussie Cat. I obviously haven't looked at this chart in a really long time. Um, <clears throat> I don't really want to trade Aussie Cat. I'm just saying, um, you know, if look at some of these other these other crosses, like. Well, EuroCAD was one we just talked about, but yeah. All right, so I'm going to wrap it up there. I'm going to go. Um, early in the webinar, we looked at the dollar. That's like really the most important thing to look at right now is that index. Those levels are big. They're huge. Pay attention to them. And um, other than that, I'll get this archived and out as soon as I can and have a super wonderful, great rest of your week my friends. And thanks for attending this webinar. All right. I will talk to you all later. Take care. Bye.